Welcome everybody. I'm Boris Stink, Tango Alpha 7 Whiskey or Oscar Hotel 2 Uniform Delta Sierra from Finland. Today uh, with my friend uh, Barb we will talk about the ADX, a digital QRP transceiver. Uh, just before we start I would like to say that I'm in this hobby for more than 30 years and with Barb for the last few years, uh, I had my I had the best experience on building some small devices, thanks to him. Welcome, Bob. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, my name is Barbara Sasaroglu. Everyone knows me as Barb. Uh, my call sign is Whiskey Bravo Two, Charlie Bravo Alpha. Living in uh, New York, USA. Uh, yeah, it was an adventure that's going on for a long time. Uh, as I, I'm in the hobby also, like uh, Boris said, for almost 30 years, but I was more on uh, VHF and UHF side of things. I never was interested in v uh, HF, but lately in 2019 onwards, I got interested with the digital modes, especially with digital modes, Whisper, FD8, FD4. I, I think and, we will talk about that history yeah, <laughs> more yeah. in detail today. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, today uh, the agenda is first we will talk about the history because uh, it has a very interesting history behind. There's an interesting history behind this ADX uh, transceiver. Uh, Barb will talk about that. Then we will see the specifications of the ADX transmitter. Uh, we will go through the schematics to understand uh, the details of this. Uh, device. What is special about this device like CD2003 IC and of course the zero crossing technique we will talk about. Uh, we will not forget to talk about the SI5351 as well. Then the CAT interface and we will show you some um, simple steps about building this device and how to test it. Yep, Barb? Yeah, so uh, this is the history. Uh of the evolution that I uh, tried to come from QCX all the way to ADX. So everything started with QCX actually. Uh, I got a QCX, I modified it to micro SDX. Micro SDX is a full blown SDR all mode QRP transceiver. Uh, so the modifications on QCX led to uh, to work on SSB, especially, and I could use it so digital modes also. So it came to design my own rigs, which you can see in the middle. So it's the first one is the micro SDX mono, and then it became micro SDX soda, soda with ATU, etc. The problem I had here was uh, micro SDX is a very good rig. But it's like using when on digital modes, going to your supermarket, like 300 feet away with your Ferrari. I was using only the digital modes and I wasn't using anything else. So I put my head to kind of design something that's basically does only digital modes. Then QDX came. And when I watched the video of QDX, I said, this is the gadget that I should try to design. And that's a great, great product, only dedicated to digital modes. Without gimmicks, nothing doing else, that's it. So that's how ADX project started. I wanted to build something similar to QDX, but I don't have the skills, neither the form firmware skills Hans has. So I said, okay, I'll strip it down as much as I can and produce something very, very simple. So, And you did. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the specifications. So, yeah. yeah, the specifications of uh, ADX is it works between HF bands up to 30 megahertz using appropriate LPF field filters from 80 to meter to 10 meter which means that we are changing LPF feed filters in the basic ADX to cover every band. 
it outputs roughly five watts on it, and it works with the common digital mode softwares like WSJTX, JTX, MSHP, and FLDG software. It has a CAT inter well, it doesn't have a CAT interface, but soon it will have a CAT interface. Hopefully, Boris is helping on that. Uh, supports Whisper, GS8, FT4, and FT8 modes. Why four modes? Because these are the most popular modes. So I had to keep the interface as simple as possible. So that's why I sacrificed the other modes. And I said, this thing can work only on these four modes that everyone is kind of working on it now. So it works with 12 volt power supply. No audio interface is required like rig expert signaling, rig blaster. It just connects ADX uh, jacks straight with a 3.5 millimeter jacked cables to your PC and it works. Well, to operate it, you don't need a CAT. So there is no USB, no CAT, no interface needed. At this stage, it can operate flawlessly. Great. And also you can find building details on the given address below. Yeah, uh, from Antrak. Um, if we uh, first check the schematics, we have six main parts in the device, which are the speaker microphone interface, the Arduino microcontroller, transmitter, receiver, and the local oscillator driving those, and a low-pass filter. That's that's all we have, and about try to keep everything as simple as possible as far as I see so if yes. you go if you go over them one by one uh, first I would like to say the speaker microphone interface is just an interface to get only 500 to 3.5 kilohertz uh, 500 hertz to 3.5 kilohertz um, with a bandpass filter and that's it that's a simple circuit that everybody can understand so even without those it works but having those filters there is a good thing so i will not talk about the details of that then the low pass filter it's the standard low pass filter used in usdx and the others and all yes. other uh, products of barb maybe barb you would like to yeah this is this is the serial resonance type class e uh LPF. So it has uh, the design was, I think, mastered by an 7 v Dan Taylor uh, in NorCal. And then uh, we took it to micro SDX, thanks to Manuel, actually, DL2 man, who put, brought it. And I said, why not invent something else? Just use that. So, and it works perfectly good. You know, it, it suits everything that simple rig. Uh, needs it's very simple yeah tuning is a bit of a problem uh, <laughs> but if you tune class e amplifiers as everyone knows it works like a charm yeah and all the details are on the web page so you can go yeah. through them so low pass filter if you ever built a usdx or others micro sdx or others you know how to build that low pass filter next thing is the arduino where everybody knows Arduinos nowadays because it's a very cheap microcomputer and all the program is running on that uh, and there is a very how can I say not complicated I don't want to say simple but not complicated uh, software running on Arduino so Arduino is capable to do a lot in this design so yes. the main parts that we will talk about will be the receiver the transmitter and the oscillator now so when we go to the receiver it's based on the cd 2003 ic which was in our handheld radios let's say 20 30 years ago as you see in the picture and they are really cheap and they do real good job and they have everything needed to build this kind of simple receiver direct conversion receiver uh, i can say uh, normally the test circuit in the data sheet of CD2003 is as follows. So you see a lot of coils, a lot of uh, variable capacitors. So it's not easy to build this kind of uh, device 
and make it working for most of us because you know just building those coils are a real headache then there is another schematic or there's another uh, test circuit in the data sheet it's it's much more simpler so i think barb you choose this one to be the base of yes <laughs> yes the, yes uh, i mean uh, we just use the am rf preamplifier section this is an am fm chip so we use only the am rf preamplifier section and the mixer so it works like a direct conversion receiver that's all there yeah. yeah and here you can see the details of that receiver as in as it's in adx uh, the yeah. application of this CD2003. Here, um, when we go one by one, you see in the center we have the CD2003, and we have not many components uh, surrounding the that chip, but on the bottom side you will see a transistor. Uh, uh, um, how can I say? Controlling the RXTX switching. It switches the antenna between the receiver and the transmitter so it's just a switch we can just get rid of that in to understand the receiver and you can think that the, the antenna is directly connected to c11 and it goes to the chip on the right upper right side here you can see this is a dc filter so if you are using a how can i say noisy power supply um, you can keep the am receiver uh, not to be affected from this noisy power supply by using yeah, this especially kind of... when you are using with arduino arduino kind of inserts some uh, unwanted signals so right. i had to add that to eliminate those signals great and so that dc filter removed this is the receiver as you see a few capacitors a few resistors and diodes and one coil which may which you can think that how how will I make this one micro Henry coil? But uh, it's very simple to build that coil, and it's all explained. So it's just uh, winding a wire uh, in a T T thirty seven. I I guess it was. Yeah, T thirty seven too. Actually, it can be a fixed inductor also. Uh, okay, we are when we come to the other. Part, okay. I'll explain it more okay. in detail, but yeah, then what that's, we have, that's just a shock. Yeah. You know, that's then just a shock. What we have here is we get the RF signal from the antenna. We have a local oscillator signal coming from the SI5351. And what happens here is we just uh, mix those and get the audio base one audio output. And the rest is the computer's mission to decode do some digital signal processing yeah. and decode the signals um here i would like to show maybe most of you already know the vsjt what it does is where you put your cosine and you start using it and it receives the signals within the audio band and decodes what's going on in there so you can have a lot of stations even within a three kilohertz bandwidth as you see here, for example, we, here we can see 800 to 2 kilohertz, and there are many stations sending and receiving. Here you see the signals, different frequency signals. So um, the base frequency is, for example, 14.074, but then on the audio side, you have some extra um, signals, uh, tones on the top of that carrier. So first, it's not easy to pass this information from computer side to the device. Yes, we can do, we may have developed another software that which tells the device to transmit which tone, but everybody is used to, um, uh, everybody knows this VSJT and the others for FD8, FD4 and things. So uh, I think, Barb, you decided to have it as it is. So. You didn't want to change people's yeah. uh, no. <laughs> environment. No, no. Yeah. What 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 I what what I'm trying to do in this is uh, to get the tones in real time from the WSJTX that transmits and get it into Artino and use it in a zero crossing comparator fashion, which yep. Barish is going to explain now. Yeah. So how we do it normally when you have a signal, let's say one kilohertz you have to measure that frequency somehow with an Arduino. 
and yes. how, how you can do it you can just count the peaks how many peaks were there in one second then you can find the frequency but that will take some time or you can um, count the uh, time between the peaks and say this is the period so I can find the frequency but there is another easy way for this this tiny chip Atmega 328P which is the Arduino itself has a very good analog comparator inside with some interrupts so when you tell this device to compare the voltage level let's say with zero volts then you have interrupts on every zero crossing point so you know you can count the time between these zero crossing points and then you can easily calculate the frequency of that signal that signal we mean the signal coming from the VSJT to the R to the ADX so we know which exact frequency that ADX is uh, sorry VSJT is trans giving to us so we tell the rest of the system please use this frequency how we do it we have the magic SI 5351 uh, signal generator so assume that we have a base frequency 14.074 then we have a 1.420 kilohertz coming from the uh, VSJT side so we add this on the top of the base frequency and we have the uh, tone frequency for ourselves and we, we tell the SI5351 to tell uh, to uh, transmit on that frequency here you can see we get that information from Arduino to the system with an I square C interface and S0 interface goes uh, to the transmitting side for us so yeah that's the duty of SI5351 then it comes to the RF amplifier SI5351 is giving out the radio frequency with a power of a few milliwatts maybe less yeah it's uh, most importantly it's 3.3 volts so yeah. we have to buffer it yeah yeah we have to bump it up so there is an 74 ACT 244 here just tr uh, for bumping the signal up to uh, 5 volts of course a square wave because SI5351 is generating a square wave and after this 74244 it's much more <laughs> I can say it's a switch so switching a 5 volt with that signal might give you a square wave of 50 milliwatts then here we have the another magic component BS170 which if you parallel three of them you can have up to 5 watts but don't forget here 5 watt is still square wave so you need to use a low pass filter to make it back to sinusoidal and get rid of the second third and all other harmonics yep so easily you can go from 1 milliwatt to let's say 5 watts in this simple circuit yeah so i mean i have to i'm i'm making that joke i mean in other presentations i did so basically up to here we create a glorious 30 megahertz switching supply yeah. that's what it is yeah. you know, until it goes into the lpf which yeah. converts it into in, in reality it's a good space. noise source but <laughs> yeah. after the lpf it becomes a trans transmitter yeah, yeah transmittable the, signal yeah yeah we we discussed with Bob to prepare a CAT interface, computer aided transceiver interface for this uh, tiny device, and we did. So, with the new features, uh, it emulates the TS2000 because I have a TS2000, it's e easy to um, develop that for me. So, now when you change the frequency on the computer side, the device changes the frequency. When you change the motor frequency on the device side, by pressing some buttons on it then it informs the uh, it, sorry it informs the uh, PC side about this change and on the BSJT you see the new frequency on the display yep that's all about the cat interface so how we can build one bar 
Okay, yeah. So uh, this is a two PCB rig, actually, basically. There's a main PCB, as you see here. So the main PCB has all the components. All are true hole device components, so anyone can solder with any soldering iron. Uh, I don't think that there will be any problems on that. Uh, on the other side, we have a five LED interface and three switches, as you see. So two of the switches are changing the modes and bands, and the switch at the bottom uh, is the TX switch. So it's just to transmit without using any, you know, uh, WSJTX or anything for testing the rig or for tuner tuning facilities. On the top, you can see the modes, the four modes it operates, also the four bands. So the LEDs have two functions. It can show which band is selected or it can show which mode is selected. So all the details are given in the article. I don't want to go too much detail in that. It will be too long. <laughs> so uh, the other thing is the LPF module. If or if you can, yeah. Oh, also, I don't like cases because cases are problematic to, you know, I'm not a 3D printer guy or anything. So I found this method is easier for me. So I designed PCB faceplates, I call it, to the bottom and the top of the thing using standoffs. It becomes, I'll show you here, something like that. I have a tinier so, one. <laughs> and he has a new version, yeah, the tinier one. The Pico. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a very easy rig to just to build, you know. And today, in these days, PCB production is not a problem either. I mean, the Jap Chinese PCB houses are doing it very cheap. So this is the this is the uh, finished ADX. So you can see all the components. There isn't too much in it. Uh, this is at the bottom. You see that little uh, choke of one micro Henry, and on the top you see the LPF filter module. So you, the rig soft firmware supports four bands. So you can change the bands and mix and match any bands, you know. The only important thing is you have to change this LPF filter to suit the band you selected. That's the only part. And that's it. The yeah. rig works on that part then. Yeah, and if you ask how easy is building a device like this, I can say uh, this is my wife. Oscar Hotel 2 Charlie Alpha Victor or Tango Alpha 2 November Bravo Alpha. She's not an experienced electronics guy doing this kind of job every day. She's a software engineer. But in this picture, you can see she is building the device because when Bart gave me this device first, I said, how easy it is. He said, it's very easy to build it. So I tested it. And yes, it's very easy because my wife built this in a few hours easily, even the coils. And the right side shows all the stations receiving. I can say I, I, I don't have an antenna for HF for, for, for this testing. So it was just a cable outside of our house, just receiving all these stations. And we, it was unbelievable to see all this. Thanks, Bob. It was a good yeah, it was a very good experience for us. You're welcome. Too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I created this to be the simple to be four S rules, I call it. Simple to build, simple to procure, simple to test and calibrate, and simple to operate. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I think it's time for the questions and the thank you. answers. Recording stopped. Yes, we don't have any questions in the chat area, or I'm doing something wrong, Barb, but uh, if any questions, please type it into the chat area that we will answer. Yes, the first question comes from Bill, K3PEB. Is there a kit available? Uh, first, I would like to say that... Yep, Let's get this question to screen. Um, not a ready kit available yet, but it's all open source, so you can download and develop your own kit. 
manufacture your own kit. Maybe, uh, Barb, uh, you can talk about the kits. Will there be any kit in, in the U.S. for selling? Barb is in Spain, so he has a very bad internet connection. Most probably he will try to reconnect again before he comes back. As, as I see, he's frozen on my screen. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe uh, somebody can manufacture kits uh, we know for us. Barb. As, as far as I know, Barb's previous designs were copied by the Chinese and you can buy from Ali or other <laughs> Chinese sites. Barb, you you can hear me now, right? Yeah, my internet connection yep. is very uh, choppy, so <laughs> it just kicked me off. Yeah, I mean, uh, Keith Taylor is... Uh, I designed another one. It's called IDX Uno. So this is kind of a, a hat that plugs in its shield, plugs in uh, Arduino Uno. So Keith Talen said that, hey, this is a good kit. So I'm going to, you know, sell it as a kit. And I said, go ahead. You know, <laughs> I'm not selling kits. So, yeah, there will be kit for that thing. Uh, it's not the design that we showed. It's the basic one, what we showed. So, uh, okay, I see the question, where do we purchase a kit? Well, it is still not a kit. I'm still working on it. I have to write the build manual, etc. So it is not, that's the Pico, that's a different one, but it's small. It is not on the market yet, but hopefully in a couple of weeks, Keys Talon will do it. It's If you guys know the UCX, micro SDX group in IO groups, you will see the chatter there about this kit it's i mean keys is doing it for fun so we are not uh, like established kit sellers or anything i'm not selling anything anyway <laughs> he does it so what we do is we uh, announce it in the micro sdx group and everyone's in who interested you know kind of uh, actually, MicroSDX group, maybe Boris, you can pull up the, uh, you know, link to post here. I don't know if it's possible to do it now. Yeah, I just, I just put it down below the ADX group. Yeah. Yeah. Website. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, it will be like that. But ordering PCBs and building the one that's posted as you know, on my blog and on track is very easy you know it's just uh, you can get like 10 pcbs for five bucks and five pcbs for two dollars plus shipping of course the shipping is the killer but if a couple of guys come together it's easier you know they can share the cost what they do in the clubs mostly yeah most of the questions are about how to purchase it how to buy it is there a kit like the question yeah. for bill then George asked a similar question, KJ6TSX. Then Robert, KF6ABC, asked, where do we buy one? And uh, hopefully, it off, hopefully it, will be, and it will be a kit, and I hope Chinese will pick it up, and there won't be any problem. <laughs> like yeah, I, I think Chinese will copy it as soon as possible, when they yeah. have it, a copy. Yeah. The, the project website is the Untrack. Uh, the yeah. Untrack also uh, check WB2CBA, Whiskey Bravo 2 Charlie Bravo Alpha GitHub page. If you write that GitHub Whiskey Bravo 2 Charlie Bravo Alpha, you come up with my GitHub page and it's there. It's called ADX. You can't miss it. Yeah, now I will put that message to the screen as well. By the way, we have another question. Maybe you would like to answer that. Yes. It's from Yako, AC1BD, 5 volt yeah. operation, what output power? Oh, that's, that's, that's a good question because I was curious about that. And I did that actually not long ago, like uh, a week ago or so. I Instead of 12 volts, I connected the LPF to 5 volts. Believe it or not, I can get 1 watt out of it and for 5 volts. One watt is pretty good, and it consumes 225 milliamps, which means you can kind of power it with the USB itself. So that's another day's project, maybe. 
Yeah, good. I just put the project page on screen. Yeah. It's github.com slash wb2cba. Another question from Wojislav. Woj I, I hope I pronounce it right. Yeah. Zanki uniform for Hotel Alpha Kilo. It was very easy to source parts for this kit. You can find everything on Ali and boards on GLPCB. I built everything but the filters. I hope to finish it soon. Good. That's Come great back. to hear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, my, my idea was not to be hit by the chip shortage. So everything on that thing is, I mean, you are using, of course, SI5351 is hard to find now as a chip, but the SI5351 clone modules of Adafruit is everywhere, you know, it, it's easily can be bought. So that's the most crucial part. The rest is Arduino CD3203D receiver EC on eBay, like 10 of them for four bucks or whatever. Yeah, and I think in total it's less than or something around 30, 30 bucks. Yeah, 30, yeah, 30 bucks, yeah. something around 30 dollars, yeah. And believe it or not, as, I, as, I, as, as we presented, my wife just built one. And after just finishing the thing, normally you have problems. You have to debug it. You have to get it running. But it ran just after building it. And she connected that to, to an antenna and a computer. And she, start, she started QSOing. That, that, that was great. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I get always the question. I, I know it's not there, but uh, how... Uh, how can I say serious is this rig? So, uh, well, it's an experimental rig. It's a very simple rig, but how serious it is, I'll give you an example. I gifted to a friend of mine. He ran this ring for, I think, five weeks and did 780 QSOs with ATX. It's incredible. Yeah. What, what kind of antenna he used? He used an NFET, no tune NFET on 20 meters and he has i mean he's living literally on basement level in between two apartments the antenna is hidden and he has i think two or three new zealand and two couple of australia and this is from turkey to australia <laughs> great yeah, yeah this the digital modes they are great yeah they, they go they go pretty good with low power yeah and no more questions in the chat area. I think um, I can bring up the project page again. Maybe people might want to visit, see the schematics, the uh, software, everything's there. So you can just uh, procure the components and start building one for yourself. Yeah, the other thing is this is not a you know RF challenging rig. So you can even build it in a breadboard. Easily. And as far as I know, you have some test routines built in already for testing the... Um, how can yeah, I there's, the there's not... Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's nothing much to test, actually. The interface is very simple. It's LEDs. So the only thing we do is the calibration. And calibration is with a one megahertz signal. And one megahertz signal can be measured with many inferior, you know, measuring tools. So uh, like 10 megahertz scopes or, you know, one megahertz uh, frequency counters that they are selling for 10 bucks in Ali. Yep. That's the only thing you calibrate. That's it. Okay, Bob, thank you for joining us. And your internet is from Spain as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. The hotel internet is not that reliable, so <laughs> we survive. <laughs> so if no other questions, yes, one more. Okay. David, Whiskey Zero Delta Fox asking, what's next for you, Bob? What's next for me? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Building kits every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I want to work on this ADX a little bit more to make it multi-band. I'm thinking that if you design the cat boris or anyone designs, actually, I know that Pedro, my friend in Argentina, is working. Actually, he did design cat routine for it, but I didn't have time to test it because of my day-to-day uh, -day life. 
and work. So like four bands auto switch. I will be angry, but something like QDX. <laughs> Coming close to QDX, not QDX. Yeah. Yeah, I think they are not in the same segment, but this No, they are not. No, definitely they are not. <laughs> I mean, very I mean, powerful. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I did a presentation to a Canadian uh, club and they asked me, oh, this is QDX. No, it's, QDX is a Ferrari of those rigs. Mine <laughs> is a bicycle. Well, compared to QDX. Yeah, well, yeah, they go from A to B, but with different means, definitely. Yeah, and, and, it's and not I like QDX. This, I mostly like this Pico one, you know, I carried this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to write a blog and release that one. So, so yeah, that's that's an SMD version. Yeah, it's, like, it's a good a pocket version. Yeah, you pocket, can yeah. it anywhere, yeah. and you can just yeah. run it and make QSS anywhere you want. Yeah. Yep, David uh, says whiskey zero DF. Thanks for the interesting pro program, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Much appreciated. Waiting for questions. If no questions, I think we will end the stream. No. Thank you, Bob. It was good. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for everyone watching. Yes, as, as David said, let's see what next, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if my job, my job is a bit hectic. So if, yeah, if I find time, I'll definitely release whenever I build something. So you guys know me. So yeah, you'll see it. Okay. Thanks everybody for listening to us. Maybe see you in another presentation. Yeah. See you. Bye. See ya. Welcome everybody, I'm Boris Stink.